Okay, I'm a UK reseller. I buy and sell antiques, collectibles, and anything I can find, car boot sales. I buy it very cheap, hope to sell it for a good profit. Stick around, you find out exactly what I've bought today, what I think it's worth, and we'll go from there. Okay, as I said, good good morning, afternoon, whatever it is, wherever you are in the world. I've been out buying up my car boot sales again, and I've had some beautiful things. Um, and I've had a lot of cheap things today. Really, really cheap and really, really lucky, to be totally honest with you. So we're going to have a little look today at some of the things I've got. I've got it all laid out here. Um, I'm super, super excited. I'm going to start off today with a little bit of silver. little jewellery haul jewelry and silver I'm going to start off with this which is a sterling silver thimble by charles horner nice pattern on there so that's the first one then i had this thimble which again is sterling silver with turquoise these i absolutely love I had these, which are a pair of Moss Agate Sterling Silver Cufflinks. And they are gorgeous. I've had a couple of pairs of cufflinks today, but I absolutely love the Moss Agate. So I had those, but they came in with this. And I absolutely I fell in love with this straight away. Now, the lady wanted £20 on his own just for this. There's the hallmarks there. Full set of hallmarks. London hallmark. Date letter C. I haven't dated it yet. Um, absolutely spectacular thing. Good way to. This isn't hollow. This is solid cast sterling silver. And it is a beautiful bear. Trying to get the best look for you. That. so i absolutely adore that and the job lock there for the cufflinks the two thimbles and the bay she charged me 35 pounds there's a profit in my opinion just on the bay just the bay itself is going to show me a profit on that um by the time you see this lot everything in this video will be listed and i'm putting the bay up probably for 45 50 pound on his own once I've dated it and everything else. The Charles Horner thimbles, they pull decent money, as will the uh, turquoise one, and the cufflinks are gorgeous. So it was a nice little parcel there for £35. From the relatively expensive, for a car boot sale, if you like, to the ridiculously sublime and cheap. And I mean ridiculously cheap. What we have is a beautiful pair of, I'm not sure if they're like a champagne or a martini, I don't know, they're just a large glass. Do you see this beautiful bird cut in on them? They are the Millennium pattern known as Peace. Faceted stems, beautiful diamond cut in around the bottom. And who are they by? Irish Waterford Crystal. I paid a pound a glass. And I can tell you now, I googled them this morning and people are asking between 120 and 150 pounds for a pair. And they cost me two pound, pound each. What do you think of that? Are they not just spectacular? So, from good to ridiculous. I haven't decided what I'm going to put mine up for yet, but they are absolutely spectacular. Told you about a few pairs of cufflinks. Uh, these two pairs together cost me £1.50. Well, they actually cost me £1.50 for a box full, but the rest is all costume jewellery going back out on a car boot sale. 
So we have a pair of engraved cufflinks in sterling silver, and one reads father and the other one reads groom. So father and groom, and they are in sterling silver. They're gonna get cleaned up and they'll get sold them, for, obviously for somebody for a wedding. So add those. And these I really liked. I was hoping these were gold. They had enough of a look about them to be gold, but uh, they are mid-century West German cufflinks. They're fully stamped on the back, West German or W Germany. Uh, somewhere on there, so under the eyeglass. They're stamped up for West Germany, and they're absolutely gorgeous. I love the uh, finish on them. So if you're looking for a nice vintage mid-century pair of cufflinks, then they're a good one. Unfortunately, only base metal, but they should still be a tenner. Then there's this. So we have what I believe a swagger stick. Now, it's lost the end cap. Now, the end cap may have had just been a cap or may have had some, I don't know, like feathers type thing coming out of it for them to... Uh, flick for the flies for an officer to flick for the flies or something like that i don't know or it could as i say it could just be an end cap pummel cap or whatever you want to call them end cap it's carved it's in need but it's also a sword so it is a sword swagger stick you can just imagine couldn't you some officer you know giving his orders out you know you move you over there and then uh, you know at war or something like that and you know someone comes up <laughs> anyway i don't know how old it is i haven't researched it yet i just love it it's a gorgeous thing and to be honest with you sword canes do come up now and again but i don't think i've ever had a sword swagger stick now i did google them earlier and they are out there and this one has got a decent edge to it too. It's a good blade. So, yeah. That cost me a tenner. A whole ten pounds. If anybody overseas is interested, the exchange rate is about 1.2, give or take, somewhere around there. So for every ten pound, it's twelve dollars. All I got to do is get a new end put on there. And I got myself a butte. Real good piece. Of the same lady as I had the silver bear and the other pieces, I had this, which is a Whitefriars molar vase. Um, why is it called a molar? Because it looks like a molar tuff. Nice green, control bubbles, large ground and polished pontal. And that was three pounds for a nice Whitefriars molar vase. Should be 15 20 pounds of anybody's money for a nice bit of white fryers. Nice color. So that was a good one. I promised Justin I would uh, try not to tease him too much. But uh, we were in Tiraberth this morning and Justin picked up a little bit of Silvac. And I think, Justin, come on, you're better than Silvac. They're like one and two pound a piece these days. And next to the Silvac was this. An absolutely beautiful bimini glass snake. Look at the colouring on that. I'm going to show you the prices of some of these now. Quite shocking, to be totally honest with you. Let me uh, go and get them. Anyway, uh, while I'm looking, the snake came in for 50p and <laughs> he wasn't impressed. First words out of his mouth weren't pleasant. <laughs> no. Okay. This um, share this. So we have Bimini glass snakes. 
is a pair there of lamp work snakes, 150 pound they're asking. Then you come down here more realistically, you have three similar to what I got, only just one color, 55. This was about as close as representation as you were gonna get to mine. Uh, and they're asking 29.95. 1930s lamp work yellow striped glass snake. 28 there, 24, plain blue one. Now they're asking 25 pounds. So mine is going to be going up for 25, 30 pounds. And it was 50 pence. So Justin, thank you very much for leaving that one there for me. And um, when I see you next week, you'll probably slap me for teasing you. But hey ho. <laughs> uh, I had another piece. We have a sterling silver charm bracelet. All these charms are silver, and you've got a bottle of cork, a crucifix, a flower, a heart. Is it a heart or a strawberry? I think it's a heart. Uh, a dice, sweets, a bag, a key, horseshoe, and another bag. Anyway, all these charms have been soldered on, so they're all silver. Fully hallmarked silver on the clasp, fully hallmarked silver on the ring, and it was 50 pence. 50 whole pence for a nice charm bracelet. Cheap, cheerful, and beautiful. And these are coming back in. I find a lot of people are buying um, charm bracelets these days. Next, I got this. And I'm not 100% what it is. Now, it's a bronze finish, but don't get excited. It's a base metal. It's pewter or spelter. Uh, well, it's spelter, to be honest with um, you. You know, a base metal and it has got beautiful glass eyes now the gentleman in question who sold it to me said he thought it might have been the top of a clock I had different idea I thought it may have been a pen holder now this is what I thought it was going to be something along the lines of that you see there where you've got the quill coming through the horns or the antler. And even on this one, if you look at it, they're not identical. They're quite um, all over the place, the same as mine. So that's a glass-eyed stag in bronze pen holder. Uh, they've put these down as an inkwell. Oh, the ears opens up as well for an inkwell. So theirs is actually intended as a pen holder. So I would assume this is a pen holder also. Because that's an inkwell and pen holder. They're asking wonderful money for mind. But yeah, uh, he sold it to me for a fiver. I thought, Do you know, comfortably you get a pen along there. No problem at all. Uh, and that one and that one. So you could hold three pens on there. So I'm not 100% if it is a pen holder, but I think so. But for a fiver, I just wish it was bronze, not spelter. But it's absolutely gorgeous nonetheless. Now something I don't think you've ever seen me buy are baby shine glasses. And the reason I don't buy them is because they don't pull no money. However... I had a bit of a shock this week. I have never seen a triangle baby shine glass. Uh, there we go. And if I can share with you. This is a triangular baby shine glass. Now... I'll show you a normal baby shine glass in just a moment. But they're asking £100 for six. Now, I can tell you a set of four has sold for uh, £40 -odd for a set of four. Now, a standard baby shine glass looks like this. You see the round there with the plain stem. There you go. That's a normal baby shine glass. I don't touch them. Now, don't get me wrong. There will be some rare ones, rare colors, and so forth. They're selling the job lot there of things it's not just a couple of glasses it's 24 baby shams for that money however 
a set of six sold, uh, asking a hundred, and a set of four sold for forty pounds. Two, three, four. So I have four baby shark glasses. I have never seen that shape baby sham glass before in all the years I've been doing it. And the gentleman says to me, I want to clear out today. Everything is a pound. I picked him up expecting to pay a pound a glass and he charged me a pound for the four. 25 pence a glass for baby sham glasses that in all honesty, I didn't even know existed. Never, never seen them before. So I was over the moon with that. Next, we have a little monkey. Now, there's a name for that one, isn't there? Is that the monkey of friends? Same type of monkey, I think, of Outbreak and Friends. I can't think of the name of it. Either way, it don't matter. Uh, this one is Russian. It's Lomonstov. Made in USSR. Um, this one I paid a whole £12 for, but it's a good size. It's about eight, eight nine inches, something like that. In good condition and he's absolutely lovely and I have looked and they're around 30 pounds so that one is fine nice bit of variety and you know I like my animals this I have no idea what it is yet I need to do more research I have bought a pendant now, I'll be honest with you some elements of this look as if they could be gold but it also looks like it's hand painted on bone or ivory so i don't know what emperor that is but it looks somebody important it looks like an emperor or someone important unfortunately the glass has been broken on it you can see the break on the glass and this one isn't going up for sale until they do research on it. This came in a 50 pence junk box this morning. They said there's no gold, no silver in there. I said, that's okay, I'm interested in vintage and unusual. I went through it and I dug this out for 50p. And I've had it under an eyeglass. And i got to be honest with you, I could do with a stronger eyeglass. I really could, because my eyes are getting worse and worse and worse. But, you know, I'm pretty confident that's painted. And I don't understand what these three gold panels are in the centre on both sides. There's a gold, gold panel, three gold panels there, and again on there. So I don't understand exactly what it is. And there is some green on the inside in there. But that's on the mount. If you actually look at this on the outside, this way to it, this scratch into it, yet there's no discoloration. So I'm going to have to acid test that just to be on the safe side. But I've never seen anything like it. So obviously uh, a pendant, probably quite an important family. So it wouldn't surprise me if any of this was gold. Certainly looks it. The top there is soldered. So anyway, it could be something, could be nothing. It's something I'm going to have to research. But what a curio. Absolutely wonderful to find at a car boot sale. And certainly looks hand painted on ivory. And I know I'm going to struggle to sell it if it's on ivory, but you can wear my own collection. I love Chinese artifacts. Next, I have this beautiful color. I don't think you're going to get to see the color, true color of it. It is beautiful, deep purple amethyst. Absolutely stunning color. Now, it's fully hand blown. It's got a large ground out and polished pontal. It's been snapped off and polished smooth on the top there. So both pieces have been hand blown. 
is some sort of preserve jar. Now, it's in good condition. A little scratch there, by the looks of that. Oh, is that something on it? No, I don't know. I don't know if that's a scratch or if it's coming off. Might be a scratch. But what it has got on the base is an S. Now, when I originally saw it, I thought it might have been Thomas Webb or something like that. And I'm not sure whether the S is for like Stuart or whether the S is for seconds, as in it could be a flawed piece of second. But it's absolutely gorgeous. I paid 50 pence for it, love the colour. Even if I got a tenner for it, 10 or 15 pounds, it is absolutely gorgeous. Love the shape and love the colour. But for 50 pence, I certainly wasn't leaving it there. Then there was this. Um, literally been through the old thing. It was raining. And I was just stood chatting to Justin. And I said, you know, I'm going to have a quick little glimpse around my ear before I go. And what do I see? Was this. What does our little label say by there? Um, hopefully you can read that. Look at that. And I say to the gentleman, how much? He says, oh, give me a pound. Sterling silver in the box. Actually say it's on a sterling silver. Turn it up that way. So that you could read it, but it fell. Sterling silver. A pound. It's not fortunes. It might be a ten, and if I'm lucky for the necklace and the earrings, but from a pound for solid uh, uh, sterling silver. Then I bought a few pieces of Nikki, who had a hard time today at the car boot sale. I'm not going to go into details, unfortunately, because I don't want to get banned from the boot sale. But needless to say, she had an argument with the uh, owner. Anyway, I bought this and some action men off her. So this is the first piece. It's nothing special. It's just a little bit of Royal Crown Derby. Royal Crown Derby is an exceptional name, but it's just a little pin dish, a uh, posy dish. Nothing special, but what I will do is I'll make a group of these up because I do collect all this little stuff and then make a group up. So, nice bit of Crown Derby there. So, I had the Crown Derby and I had a selection of early 1993 to 97 um, action men. A big collection of them. These are all the ones with the furry heads. Um, and the, some of these heads on their own sell for good money. But yeah, I had six action men, all from the 90s, all with furry heads, and the derby for £12. And if you look some of these up, you know, if you look that one up online, he's probably 20 or 30 quid on his own. What I intend to do is put the group on, um, the group of action men on. Uh, they range from 93, 95, and 97. I have looked at the back, and they're all Hasbro stamped up and dated. Um, and I'll probably chuck the six on for 30 quid, five or a doll, which is a giveaway price. To be honest, you trade could buy it at that price. And the Crown Derby is going to go away until I get a few more pieces. Mm, I think that's it. I only think. Um, before I shut it all down, if you want to support the channel, there's free ways. Um, just like, share, comment the videos, and I'm eternally grateful. Um, or if you want to help or support the channel, everything you need to know is in the description. Um, check out the website. Everything goes on the website. I have over 2,500 pieces up for sale on the website now. Um, and it is growing fast. So, And it's all really nice quality stuff. So, anyway, what do you think? Do you have a favourite? What do you think of the Waterford Crystal for 